Nashville. So what did you meet Buck at? In South Nashville. South Nashville. Yeah, just like I was a kid, dude. Like I came up bumping Buck. Mm -hmm. Like he used to be in a group with a dude named Young Buck and DT. And they had a song, back on up and give me room. Back on up and give me room. Move, bitch, move. And that's all we bumped. I'm talking about when I was a kid, it was like, even my story, like when I do interviews, they're like, what hip hop did you grow up listening to? It was all local shit. So I've been a Buck fan since Buck was, I was probably 10 years old, man. Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy Jelly Roll, and you're watching thisis50.com. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> Good news, travel slow. Oh, yeah, baby. Kyle, Kyle. I said, bad news travels fast. You're much too good to last. You rolling like thunder. Run and take cover. Bad news. I said, bad news travels fast. Something different, man. I had to. Bad news. The fat dude with tattoos. Johnny Cash. Man in black. Yeah, black shoes. Johnny Cash. He sings and he raps too. You ain't gotta act new. Convenient like fast food. I'm an asshole, baby. I don't even act cool. Yeah, I'm in your rear view. I'm about to lap you and I ain't looking at you. I'm looking past you. I told him, bad news travels fast. You're much too good to last. You rolling like thunder. Run and take cover. Bad news. I I said bad news travels fast. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you, brother. What's it like growing up inside Nashville? You didn't feel the pressure to become a, a country singer? Yeah, yeah. What's crazy is I came up doing gangster rap music and now I damn near am a country music singer. So it's funny, like, the shit ended up that way for me any fucking way. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell me how that, that bridge that, that bridge happens and whatnot. Because obviously, because with the way you do it, I can tell you it's deeply grounded. Um, Inside your roots. Right, moment. right. Man, it's like, the older I got, the truth, here's, I'm a, I'm a music person of reflection. And I made a bunch of dope boy music when I was a dope boy, right? So a few years removed from that, when I got out of prison, I was like, I started growing up, hanging around my little girl more, getting in touch with different people in my family I'd never talked to when I got out of jail. So things started, my life started changing, so my music just evolved naturally with it. Pretty easy for me. So you, 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 were you rapping while you was a dope boy? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm trouble. I got in trouble for it plenty of times. I was the dumbass dope boy that would drop a mixtape called the Mid Grade Miracle because I was selling Mid Grade. You done fucked up, you know that, don't you? Right. So all the police would be like, look at this stupid that, And they used your shit. Oh, yeah. To dude. indict oh, you. Oh, it was awful, dude. I got, I got arrested all the time, harassed, pulled out of the car. And that was the thing Buck respected about me was because I could walk both lines of the city. We could go to the country music honky tonks and everybody be like, hey, Jelly. Or we could go to the most ratchet after hour club. Motherfuckers be like, what up, Buck? What up, Roll? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just always love. Like, mm -hmm. I was that guy in my city. Where, where, what did you go to prison for, Timmy? Like, I, I don't... My last case was a crack case. I got caught with, like, crack. A very small amount of crack. Okay. Yeah. And how long they gave you? I did, like, 18 months on that show. 18 months. Okay. I came home on eight years' paper. I'm still on paper. Word. Today. Today I'm still on paper. Yeah. I got a travel permit in my bag. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So this, can you go out the country? No, not well, I can't if a country will accept me, but most of them won't. Oh. Yeah, because when I was a kid, I caught a robbery at an attempted homicide case, and I got charged as an adult for it. So my record looks horrible because I got a violent charge and a drug case. Where some cars would be like, oh, we'll take him if he just got old drug charge. And yeah. they see the robber and be like, fuck no. <laughs> then you get them weird countries that are like, oh, we'll take the robbery case. It was young. Oh, fuck, he got a crack case? Hell no, he's bringing drugs to our country. All right. So. We're trying though. You know, it just takes money, I guess. That's it. That's all it is. You got that paper, anything can happen. Right, right. Anything can happen, shit. Murder was the case they gave Snoop Dogg, but he all over the world. Yeah. Yeah, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. You know, so let's, let's, let's talk about Whiskey Weed. And Waffle House. Oh, yeah, dude. Man, now, have y'all settled that situation with Waffle House yet? No, they hate me. Yeah, they're not opening the girls. I don't, I don't understand. understand. I'm like what, like, what was the problem? Ain't you helping Waffle House? That was my theory. Was I'm a four, I was 450 pounds at the time. I'm, I look like every cook you've ever fucking hired. <laughs> when have you been to Waffle House in the South and not seen a cook that looked like me on the midnight shit? Big white boy with tattoos, but no teeth. <laughs> looking at you. Pissed off. He's working there. Yeah. Look at the women that work there. I'm like, this is, this is. Some this is what I told some, in the man, world. Listen, man, I am y'all's core demographic. <laughs> when is the last time a motherfucker from Wall Street strolled into a Waffle House unless he was just stuck in the South? So, this is we do that recreationally. Right, right. That's right. our thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I I feel like y'all should have embraced my little mixtape right. and 
and cheered me on and gave me a sponsor. She started like a Jared with me. Right. You know, I had to start just eating your grilled chicken and protein eggs or something. We could have right. dropped some weight together. We could have really organized something with Waffle House. Exactly. And, instead they, and the funny thing was that I got an email from them and it said, you know, cease and desist, take this down immediately. My white trash ass posted it on Facebook, right? But I'm just like, this is so cool, right? This is before I thought to hire a dove or anybody. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. So I posted. The next email was sent to me and my lawyer. It was like, this is the most unprofessional thing we've ever dealt with. He is making a mockery of this. <laughs> we are truly. And I was like, dude, that. So that's whenever I was like, oh, this is, I'm going to get sued. I'm on my way to the lawsuit, dude. The next thing you know, Jimmy Fallon covered it. And I was on, I was on all these big websites. Oh, you popped on that. Popped. Finally, Waffle House is threatening to take legal action against a rapper after he used their logo on his album, Whiskey, Weed, and Waffle House. <laughs> Although, in fairness, that is the correct order. Let's talk about Jared, man. Jingle Jared, man. The Jew that changed my life. I call him Jew Chains. <laughs> Jew Chains? <laughs> Jew Chains? He's the Jew that changed my I life, man. He, uh, he heard a song on YouTube called Fire and Rain where I remixed old James Taylor. And uh, I did another record called So Long with my buddy Yellow Wolf. And uh, I was singing the hook. I've been rolling down these dirty back roads for so long. And he was like, dude, you can sing. I was like, no, 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 I sang because nobody was there to sing. I couldn't afford a singer, so I sang, you feel me? And he was like, no, this is the direction we need to go, man. We need to put guitars. And he really kind of built me in a confidence in my voice and, 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 and just kind of built the entire sound around what we're doing now. Did you ever think that you'd be doing this, man? Because I talked to Everlast. He never thought he'd be doing that. Absolutely. Talked to Kid Rock. He didn't think he was going to do that either. Never thought it, dude. And I feel like I feel like those are two great names to put me with. I respect both of them men immensely. Uh, uh, both of them came from a similar background of mine. And I feel it because I never thought it. Even fucking 15 months ago, 14 months ago, I never would have seen it coming, dude. Mm. But we started cutting records, and we did that Sunday morning record. and. Let me light a cigarette and drink me a beer. And I was like, that's where I need to be at in life. It was a happy song. It made people happy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's something else I wanted to change was, you know, the, the other shit the made tone. people dark. Right, right, you know what I mean? Right, right. It, it was dark. It was it was mm. ominous. You know, it had a bad spirit to it when you really think about it. This new shit's just fun, man. We're having a blast. Still touching real matters. And, you know, shit that applies to me more now than anything else. This has been an excellent interview. Ah! Honor and a pleasure. That uh, man, dream come true, man. I mean, this bitch was Jack Thriller, ho. It dream, <laughs> yo, it dream come true for me, too, man. Ah! Well, like I always say, you just can't say you really something you got to be, man. Jelly Roof, man. Yo, we on, we out of here. If you do have something in mind, y'all go to commercial. Don't kiss them hoes in the mouth unless you got to. No. Blow up the whole damn town. I've been drinking and smoking. Yeah, I've been smoking and drinking. Woo! I wake up in the morning like, what the fuck was I thinking? Uh -huh. I'm a real outsider. Maybe